what purpose are bayonets uh, being given out for? Senator, uh, bayonets are available under the program. I can't answer what a local police force would need a bayonet. I can for. give you an answer, none. The militarization of law enforcement, the times and the leadership in Ferguson, Missouri, changing. So are thoughts about NFL players and their wives. And then again, there's a speech tonight. All food for fodder as we head around the dial. And welcome back author and syndicated radio host, a proud black Tea Party conservative, Kevin Jackson joins us. Kevin, good to see you again. You as well. All right, let's get to it. The president speaks tonight. Are you expecting something really notable to come out of it? Or as so many people seem to indicate, do you think this is just another shot at optics for the president? Uh, totally optics. Uh, you know, we're going to get to see how tough Barack Obama is and how diff you know tough he's going to make it on the terrorist and of course, he's going to give his shout outs to the economy, uh, you know, and try to make it appear as though, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, liquid we're feeling is not pee and he's going to describe it as rain. So, you know, it's going to be more of the same. And, and it's just typical Obama. He understands where he is in the polling, which the, the mainstream media is not releasing all of the internal polls that they're doing because it's been so bad for him. So as far as optics go, he's my optic. Get inside his head right now. Kevin Jackson is now running Barack Obama's brain. He can speak for him. Here is exactly in a short little clip what you would say to the American public tonight, what needs to be said. Well, America, you can feel safe. Uh, <laughs> ISIS is under control. Uh, <laughs> I'll do it as me. Uh, yeah, yeah please do it as you, Kevin. I think it's because <laughs> there's many things that you can do, but I don't think you're Obama quite as up to snuff yet. So please. ISIS, ISIS is under control. The war on terror is under control. The economy's looking good. Uh, you know, America. But those would all better. be lies, wouldn't they? That's that's exactly what Barack Obama says. I mean, he's got to make you feel good about what he's doing because your reality is very different. So what liberalism has to do is it has to make you suspend belief. So, I mean, it's Hollywood. He says that he's not set up for theater, but that's all this is. It's theater. He'll talk about 9-11, obviously the eve before 9-11, and all that's being done. He certainly won't mention Benghazi and the lack of protection that he gave to the embassy in, in Libya. So you know what it's going to be. It's got, it's got to be something to make you completely believe the lie of liberalism and the lie of his administration. So if I can guess, you'll be DVRing it and have something else on perhaps at the time? <laughs> well, my my staffers will certainly be uh, keeping me abreast, but I will not be watching it the way I would watch uh, other things. I'm, I'm The unfortunate part is I have to pay some attention to it, so I will be watching it to a degree. All right, let's spin to what's going on now. We led with this, of course, Rand Paul and the militarization of the police department. Listen up to Peter Kraska, professor in the School of Justice Studies at Eastern Kentucky University, also spoke at the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Government Affairs hearing yesterday. He said the least they can do is cut off the supply of military equipment equipment to local law enforcement once and for all. Here it is. Cutting off the supply of military weaponry to, to our civilian police is the least we could do to begin the process of reining in police militarization and attempting to make clear the, the increasingly blurred distinction between the military and police. All right. Is militarization, is giving military, is providing this sort of equipment to sometimes overmatch police, is that the real problem with what's going on in our local communities? Absolutely not. I think Rand Paul is completely missing the mark on this. Uh, look, if I, the police have a very difficult job. I've said this on CNN and Fox and anywhere else. The, uh, the point is, these guys should have the best weaponry. They're usually outgunned. They, they're, I mean, look at what happened to our military in Mogadishu with a bunch of uh, third world you know, runts running around. So imagine what a group of people who are organized and, and weaponized here in America could potentially do to the cops. I think this idea of, of trying to demonize the police by saying, hey, they're getting all this military surplus, where would they like it to go? Do they want it to go to ISIS? ISIS got a billion dollars worth of military surplus. You know, I don't think they need it. So as far as uh, protecting American citizens and this idea that the police are against us, I think is ridiculous. Can they turn it on at any given time? Sure, but they've got the National Guard and the military for that. They don't need the cops for that. Would you agree, though, that certainly there was a there was a raucous meeting at the Ferguson, Missouri City Council last night, as a matter of fact. There were accusations of racism, police harassment, government incompetence. They want some changes there. Would you at least not agree that something's got to change? Certainly the police need to be armed, but something's got to change at this local level because certainly in Ferguson, they have a real disparity there that doesn't speak to what really America should be about. 
Uh, the Ferguson issue is a, a complete red herring. You've got a city with 70 percent of the black folks who have a white mayor that a certain number of people obviously voted in. They've got an all white city council. So it's, it's one of the, one or the other. Either you're detached and you don't care and you're not participating, which is a potential, or you trust the white people that you've put in charge. Ferguson would probably be well served to just let these white folks stay in charge because the alternative is letting people like the Congressional Black Caucus run your city, which is a complete and utter recipe for failure. If you want to run your city into the ground, let a black liberal be in charge of it. Most people won't say that to you because they're afraid to, but that is a fact. There's hardly a city that you can name that's run by predominantly black, and it would be liberals because that's the only people that get elected in, in the cities are Democrats, and there's hardly one that you can point at and say is a success story. All right, Kevin, I got about a minute left here. Roger Goodell says that the NFL and he did not see the Ray Rice second tape. They're doing the best they can with this. There are people who just say that as far as they're concerned, Roger Goodell is just covering up and making sure that the NFL can still sell tickets. What do you think? I think there's a part of that. I mean, the NFL is a business. I think uh, Ray Rice's behavior was deplorable, but, you know, he's fallible like many other humans. And I guarantee you, if you start pulling up this Komodo of the people in the NFL who've done some shenanigans, man, you'd have to probably – every team would have to be playing with scabs. So, you know, this idea that Roger that uh, Ray Rice has done something that other people haven't done is ridiculous. And if you if you translate it to other sports, Mayweather beat his wife. He's got a bit the biggest fight of his career coming up. Yeah, but we didn't see videotape of those. That's not an excuse, but you know how the optics work again. The videotape of this one certainly just made it as heinous as possible. Oh, uh, certainly. Just last question here then. Would you agree then, and certainly I'll say this out loud, I don't think Ray Rice should ever play again in the National Football League, ever put on a uniform, period, end of story, and I don't think anybody's going to be stupid enough to hire him again. What do you think? Oh, somebody will hire him, and I think that's probably taking it a bit far. I mean, he made a mistake. I'm not condoning it in any way, but should his career be ended because he made a mistake? Uh, you know, Chris Brown did the same thing with Rihanna. He's singing. I mean, look, I, again, I'm not trying to, to make light of it. I think domestic violence is, is deplorable, but it happens in America and people learn. And you, you can't just say, hey, he's got to go now find something completely else to do because he's made a mistake. If that was the case, we'd all be looking for new jobs. All right. You and I got to go at this one of these days. Oh, yeah. And by the way, Gesundheit. <laughs> Thank you. Just thought I'd make sure to get that in there. Kevin, thanks so much for joining us, my friend. Talk to you again. My pleasure. All right, next hour, the NFL's obvious cover-up in the Ray Rice affair, but is it obvious? And after the break, news call and what Roger Goodell said. It's coming up next right here on Midpoint.